October 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, James chapter 1 from the New Testament. From James, a slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes dispersed abroad, greetings. My brothers and sisters, consider it nothing but joy when you fall into all sorts of trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect effect, so that you will be perfect and complete, not deficient in anything. But if anyone is deficient in wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without reprimand, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed around by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, since he is a double-minded individual, unstable in all his ways. Now the believer of humble means should take pride in his high position, but the rich person's pride should be in his humiliation, because he will pass away like a wildflower in the meadow. For the sun rises with its heat and dries up the meadow, the petal of the flower falls off, and its beauty is lost forever. So also the rich person in the midst of his pursuits will wither away. Happy is the one who endures testing, because when he is proven to be genuine, he will receive the crown of life that God promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each one is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then when desire conceives, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it gives birth to death. Do not be led astray, my dear brothers and sisters. All generous giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or the slightest hint of change. By his sovereign plan, he gave us birth through the message of truth that we would be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. So put away all filth and evil excess and humbly welcome the message implanted within you, which is able to save your souls. But be sure you live out the message and do not merely listen to it and so deceive yourselves. For if someone merely listens to the message and does not live it out, he is like someone who gazes at his own face in a mirror. For he gazes at himself and then goes out and immediately forgets what sort of person he was. But the one who peers into the perfect law of liberty and fixes his attention there and does not become a forgetful listener but one who lives it out he will be blessed in what he does. If someone thinks he is religious yet does not bridle his tongue and so deceives his heart, his religion is futile. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their misfortune and to keep oneself unstained by the world. God, I always wonder what it is felt like to live to be James, James the just, James who was also Jesus's brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking there must have been some like interesting conversations that took place <laughs> between the two of them and probably some hard heart work on the part of James. I mean, can you imagine Jesus is your brother, not just like your brother in Christ, but, <laughs> but your real brother. That must have been really interesting. But I love how James writes. Uh, it's a little bit reminiscent of, of Paul's passion for how we are to live our lives. Uh, James, the book itself in particular, has a lot of uh, commands. He's a very verb-oriented writer. Uh, it's fascinating to me. There's something like 50 commands in this one book and there's only 108 verses. And so <laughs> uh, you get very much the idea as we'll continue through these chapters in James uh, that faith without works is dead. That because of your faith and your salvation, 
your heart is so changed that your desire to do the right thing and do good and to help other people just overwhelms you. It's not works that saves you, uh, but that salvation, that new heart is what propels you into action. And we even see bits and pieces of this in, in this first chapter from James of you can't just read this. If you just read this, it's a story to you. It's not really in your heart and your soul and you don't have a changed heart. Uh, if you can read the word of God and then go do, that shows a truly changed heart. That shows a, a, a true person of salvation. Um, I also find it interesting that he compares testing and tempting. That testing is good. Testing um, helps us uh, define and make more clear our faith and our path that we're supposed to walk. Uh, it builds endurance and strength and perseverance and teaches us so many things. Temptation is our own doing. <laughs> Temptation, uh, we are tempted to do something, definitely not by God. And it's a choice we make that we choose to sin, sin, even though God always gives us a way out. We choose our selfishness. We choose our own desires. Um, and how fascinating that we get those mixed up constantly. That testing a lot of times to us makes us whine a lot. Makes us go, why me, God? Why do I have to go through this? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you signaling me out? And also gives us just the reason we need to head into temptation and thus sin. Why me? And if you're going to do all this to me, I might as well just go and, and choose this temptation and then and then sin because of it. Uh, it almost sounds a little bit like a, a little kid making up reasons why they should be allowed to do something <laughs> they're not allowed to do. But we do the same thing. And so we get testing and temptation confused all the time. So I love that James just jumps right into that and it's like, nope, testing is good for you. Testing comes from God. It's because he loves you. He wants you to be the best person uh, that he made you to be. He always wants what is best for you. Temptation has nothing to do with him. God cannot tempt you. He has, he doesn't even understand what evil is. <laughs> There's no evil in him. Uh, so he can't tempt you. So, so don't get the two of them mixed up and don't use one as an excuse for the other. Um, now, now that we've got that clear, go and do. And I, I love that about James very much. Go and do. Uh, he reminds me, <laughs> reminds me a little bit of Yoda. There's no try. There's only do. Go and do. Um, and God, today I just, I just ask that you, you bless and strengthen our walk. Uh, we, we do get excited when we hear your word and when we read your word. And sometimes we even want to talk to other people about it. But sometimes that action piece is the part that we just really struggle on for a variety of reasons and sometimes excuses. But that's the part that you want to see from us because that's the true obedience. Uh, just reading it isn't true obedience, uh, not to you. But what we do with what we've read and how our actions um, play out and also how we handle our words and speech, uh, how they reflect, how our lives reflect you uh, is all played into uh, this go and do part that you've commanded us to do. So, so help make that path really clear. Uh, strengthen us to head down that path and guide our feet and help us to understand sometimes it's just one tiny baby step at a time but at least we're heading down the right path. We're not heading down the path of temptation. Our path with you may be filled with a lot of testing and a lot of um, work and endurance, uh, but it is all because of your love that you have for us, wanting always amazingly what is best for us. In your son's name I pray, amen.